Virginia's profound population growth that's happened over the next 20 years is going to have tremendous implications for just about every industry. And what I think is incumbent upon uh, policymakers and elected officials and, and community leaders is to not only understand how big a population is going to become that they're responsible for, but what it's going to be like in terms of its makeup and what expectations the citizenry are going to have. And uh, through our research and that generational lens that I talked about, we see some significant changes and more demands that are going to be placed on, uh, certain, on some communities that aren't quite ready for it. So understanding the significant increase in population is just the surface level. Every elected official and policymaker and community leader needs to understand that population statistic and what it means for their community. Certainly if you're in the crescent, you've got to manage growth. If you're in one of the rural areas, you have to start having adult conversations about being left behind. Now for the folks in the urban areas, they've got to deal with not only an increase in population, but an increase in expectations, different expectations. The best example is to think about the baby boomers and the silent generation. Silent generation, those folks that are 65 to about 85 today, are the seniors today. They grew up at a time during the 1930s, during what we call their wonder years, when they were young kids and young teenagers living in families that had to really suffer through the Great Depression in that 10-year run of the 1930s when it was really scarce resources. I mean, there was rationing for staples and people had to move in and live together and neighborhoods had to have, uh, you know, neighborhood gardens and uh, just, just to make it work. You know, you hear about the soup kitchens and bread lines. They weren't the United Ways and the foundations and unemployment checks. This, it just didn't exist back then. So everybody had to take care of everybody. So consequently, the silent generation, as a generation, are wired to be really uh, accepting of the status quo, to really be appreciative of anything they have, to be really sort of savers, to plan for their retirements. So today's senior is the perfect senior. They really are self-sufficient. They really have put away some savings. They really can live on modest means. And more importantly, they can accept the status quo and say, thank goodness we have some of the services we have. So the perfect group to take care of. Now, flash forward. Let's look at the baby boomers, the children of the silent generation folks. All of a sudden, this is a generation who came of age in the 1950s and early 60s. When they were kids and students, the whole world catered to them. These guys, boomers, were wired to believe that the needs of one would outweigh the needs of many, that they could get whatever they wanted because that's the way they saw life. The suburbs were taking off, the appliances were coming, our space program was taking off, everything was going their way. And if they didn't like something, they were such a sizable group, twice the size of their silent generation, that they could get what they wanted. So whether or not boomers were the, the leaders of uh, you know, Vietnam protest or whether uh, the civil rights movement they were leaders isn't the point. The point is they were there as foot soldiers. They were there in changing our society into the way they wanted to shape it. Boomers at their core crave control and are transformative as a generation. So they abhor the status quo. They really want to get in and make it different and make it special. So when you think about the word boomers, think about how it's spelled. B-O-O-M-E-R. There's a me in boomers. And so baby boomers, as they become the new seniors, and they already started to become, because the first one has turned 65, and now the oldest boomer is 66. So over the next 20 years, these baby boomers, me-oriented folks, are going to become the new seniors. And as they make this transition, which is called the age shift, or Ken Dykewell calls it the age wave, as they make this shift, there are going to be twice as many seniors in every community as there are today, because 
there are twice as many baby boomers, basically, as they are silent generation seniors. That's why it is the age shift, the age wave.